This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about him coming back to the WWF. He says he has a secret meeting planned and he's going to take a plane to meet Vince Jr. Who's the boss at this point, of course. And Martel says that he suggests the Can-Am connection with Tom Zink. Zink had just worked with Martel in Montreal and he had taken a liking to him. And Dino, of course, is hot when he hears about the secret meeting. Of course, he ends up in the company in 86 as well. Um, these secret trips, these have become legendary over the years. You know, we're not going to tell anybody. We're going to go have the private meeting with Vince. And it feels like nine times out of 10, Vince got his man, right? Well, uh, secret meetings, the, you didn't want the guy that you're working for know that you're going to go meet with another promoter. Right. And that was just common sense out of any, anything. I don't know that it was as much cloak and dagger as a lot of people would like to romanticize about. It was, you know, a meeting. They go out to dinner and meet somewhere and talk and discuss business. But if that didn't work out, you never wanted the guy that you're, we're currently working with to know that, Hey, this guy's over here trying to get a job in New York. And that's, you know, where the clandestine meetings and all this stuff come into play. So Rick is back with the WWF. He's going to be on superstars, making his TV debut, at least on October 28th, 1986. He's still tagging with Tom Zink here. They're going to pick up a win over Steve Lombardi and ironically enough, moon dog spot his old pal, or maybe not so much. This is the, um, the first time that superstars of wrestling had the superstars of wrestling banner and the WWF banner hung from the rafters. I know that's a random piece of trivia, but we get questions about this all the time. I think a lot of fans grew up with those rafters hanging from the ceiling and for whatever reason, they just went out of fashion with Vince over the years, I assume. Well, Trons and electronics and what have you kind of took over, uh, WrestleMania signs, giant electric lit up signs are much more impressive than the wrestling challenge and wrestling superstar Saturday night main event banners that used to hang and be lit strategically across the arena. And it was at this time that they had made the decision that we are, we're no longer going to do TV and Hamburg, Pennsylvania, and what have you, we are now going to tour. We're going to go out and we're going to do our television show all over the country. And that was the syndicated properties. And they had a look that was very specific to each show. That November, Martel and Zink are going to work against the tag champs, the British Bulldogs at the forum in Montreal and get this. The Bulldogs are having to work as heels in the match because of how popular Martel and Zink were. I mean, was Rick Martel like maybe the low key original Bret Hart? Is he like a big Canadian hero in this era? Well, again, Montreal's different. Man. Yeah. It's just different. And it was more a matter of how that audience was going to take Rick Martel that they knew. And he was one of them. So the audience was, they're, they're very loyal. Got to, got to hand it to them there. They're very loyal and, and you can't, you're just not going to change that. When 87 starts, they're working against Greg Valentine and Brutus Beefcake. They're also working against the Hart Foundation, Demolition, Iron Sheik and Volkoff. Of course, WrestleMania three opens with Rick Martell and Tom Zink winning the very first match picking up a win over Don Morocco and Bob Orton Jr. And then the split with Zinc happens. And I guess that's when we can really start to dig in because you're actually part of the organization here. They're teaming until July 9th when they had their last match together. They defeated the Islanders there. But starting on July 11th, Zinc would be substituted with various partners for Martell after leaving the company, I believe over a disagreement over pay. Do you remember hearing about this split and, and what the real deal was? You know, I, I think that everybody's going to have their own version of it. I think that Tom kind of had a little bit higher opinion of himself. And also at the same time, 
I believe that Tom was kind of being romanced from down below in the South as well. Um, hey, come on in here. You should be a single. They shouldn't, you shouldn't be part of a tag team. And my God, you're going to be the next, the next big thing. You know, Tom had a great look. It was a hell of a worker, but, as far as what actually happened, on, I really don't know because uh, there's just a lot of rumor and innuendo out there, but it could be one of many things and it just didn't work out in the end and had to plan B. I think before Tom passed away, he did a radio interview where he said something like the reason he quit is because he found out Rick Martell had a different deal than him, or that's at least what he believed. And he felt like he was only getting $50 a night or that's all he was guaranteed rather. Uh, and he felt like he was being manipulated and he said, you know, when it came time for finishes, zinc was always the guy taking the pin. It was never Martel. And he had to do all the selling and just let Martel have the comeback. So clearly Tom was kind of bitter about how all this happened. And Martel even says it might not have worked out, but it was maybe his fault accidentally. He says, I don't have it. And this is the way it's always been in business. You don't talk about your pay. And he said, as the old timer, he was, he's trying to pump zinc up. And he also says that Linda at Vince's request helped Tom get a mortgage from the local bank. And then things come to a head when zinc refuses to adhere to the new dress code and is wearing jeans. Martel's going to chew him out for the first time ever. And then zinc quits the next day by writing Martel a memo and Martel said he flew to Tom's home with Jack Lanza and tried to convince him to return, but Tom just flat refused. And, uh, well, Rick is not very, uh, high on Tom Zink these days. That's a wild story, man, that the guys disagree and just fuck this. I'm quitting. Yeah. And, but I, but I also think that there were other elements and other factors at play there. Um, yeah. I, I could see all of that happening, every single bit of it. But I also think there were people stirring up Tom and getting Tom worked up to think that, hey, man, you deserve so much more. This guy's using you. This guy, you know, he's he's been working now 10 years. He needs a young, he needs a young guy to go out and do all the bumps for him to save his career. Well, shit, Rick wasn't that fucking old at that point. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.